Hayden hey, on high school. This is Mr. Aiden. It is 2.2 .2 periodic trends, and let's get to it. Um, all trends, dude. There, there's a bunch of trends we have in AP Chemistry. One of them is, of course, atomic radius. Uh, why is lithium smaller than cesium? Why is why is fluorine smaller than lithium? And there's trends you can see. We're getting bigger as we go down to the lower left. We're getting smaller as we go to the up upper right. But we want to know why. Okay. We also have a trends of ionization energy, which is the energy to remove an electron. Again, ionization energy is the energy to remove or to take away an electron. And there's also a trend for electron affinities. And what electron affinity is, the affinity of an atom for an electron. Okay, if you see fluorine right here, it's negative. So why is fluorine have a negative electron affinity? And you can see the noble gases here have positive electron affinities. Why do they have positive electron affinities? Guys, all of our trends could be explained with one word, attraction. Okay, I hear this word a lot because a lot of people are attracted to me. But the attraction of the nucleus to an electron is exactly that explains all of our trends. Okay, but I'm going to make it real easy. I'm going to boil it down to three things for you. Okay, and in every problem, what you want to do is you want to find out what the two things have similar, and then what do they have distinctly different. Okay, and if you see down in the lower right hand corner right here, we have. A, a really a rudimentary picture of a nucleus uh, of an atom okay and you can see in the middle we have a positively charged nucleus made of protons and neutrons and what's on the outside is electrons and the first trend we have to explain all of our trends is this the number of protons means an effective nuclear charge so if you have more protons guess what there's a greater effective nuclear charge the protons attract electrons because they're different charges, right? And so the nucleus, if you have more protons in the nucleus, guess what happens? The electron on the outside, the valence electron, is attracted to it, which means it would be smaller. It would also be a higher ionization energy. It would be more difficult to remove. It would take more energy. That's number one. First way to explain our trends. And guys, that works 80 to 85% of the time. So make sure you understand number one. Number two, a way to explain our trends is a thing called shielding. What shielding means is that's this green area of, of our atom, okay? It's the completed shells of electrons. It's it's like the S orbital that's already been filled. And so what this shielding does is it sort of shields the outside electron, the valence electron from the nucleus's effective nuclear charge. Okay? And so if there's more shielding, if there's more completed shells, guess what happens? The valence electron is less attracted to the nucleus. And if it's less attracted to the nucleus, guess what? It's going to be bigger and it's going to be easier to remove that electron, less energy. We have uh, a last thing which doesn't happen a whole lot, but every now and then, and it's electrons are pulse there's repulsion with other electrons they're repelled okay which means if you have a lot of electrons on the outside and you add another electron it's going to get further away the electrons are going to get further away because they repel okay so let's see if we can apply these uh, explanations the first uh, scenario when we want to take a look at is lithium is smaller than cesium and guys this is a vertical trend and we want to zero in on here lithium's right here cesium is right here okay and why is lithium smaller than cesium? Well, when we're doing a vertical trend here, what we want to look at is the shielding, the shielding, the number of completed shells. Lithium is n equals 2, cesium is n equals 6, and you can see lithium has less completed shells, which means there's less shielding. Okay, there's less electrons on, on that, that green part of the, the last picture. And so lithium's valence electron is more attracted to the nucleus and the less shells means there's great, greater effective nuclear charge which results in a smaller radii and it not only results in a smaller radii but now lithium that one electron to remove there's a greater ionization energy okay cesium's ionization energy is really low it reacts so fast it will just blow up even in water dude and so it, because that electron is so far away from the nucleus. Let's go to a horizontal trend. Here we have oxygen is smaller than lithium. Okay, 
oxygen and lithium are both in the n equals 2. And the reason oxygen is smaller is they both pretty much have the same amount of shielding. But what's the biggest difference is the number of protons. Oxygen has eight protons. And since oxygen has eight protons and lithium only has three, oxygen has a greater effective nuclear charge. There's, there's more protons on the inside to attract the outside electrons, the valence electrons. And so the greater attraction means oxygen is smaller. And not only is oxygen smaller, but oxygen, it takes more energy then to remove the electrons, so it has a greater ionization energy. We also have a, a trend that happens, and it happens 100% of the time, is that the second ionization energy, the energy to remove a second electron, is always greater than the first. And the reason it's always greater is once an atom loses an electron, the effective nuclear charge increases. Okay, because th think about it, that there's less repulsion on the outside, okay, and so those valence electrons are attracted more. The radius actually gets a little bit smaller, and guess what? Now the energy skyrockets. It it takes more energy to remove an electron. Okay, um, I just have a few things to wrap up this podcast. The first is the chemical reaction for ionization energy. Remember, what is ionization energy? The energy to remove an electron. And so that would look something like this. Sodium plus energy, the energy to remove an electron. And on the opposite side, on the product side, you've ripped out an electron. Okay, so that takes energy, which we call endothermic. It takes energy, okay? It absorbs energy in order to do that. Now, electron affinity... And this is the reason why fluorine on that first slide, why fluorine had a negative energy, okay? Because when fluorine, it's so close to being a completed shell, a noble gas, electronically, when it gains an electron, it releases energy, which is something we call exothermic. But think about something like a noble gas, like neon. Neon, it takes energy to remove an electron because neon has a completed shell. Um, there's just two little things that I want to add, and that is, take a look here. It says, if this element is in the n equals 3 period, what element is it? Now, take a look. There's a low first ionization energy. There's a low second ionization energy. And then what happens to the ionization, the third ionization energy? It skyrockets. It's huge. And so how many electrons will this element lose? Tend to lose two. It'll lose one, two. It's going to put up a huge fight for three, which means how many valence electrons does it have? Two, which means this is, if it's in the n equals three, we're talking about magnesium. Magnesium has two valence electrons. And one last trend is boron has a lower first ionization energy than beryllium. Look at where they are on the chart. Boron, you would, if you look at his electron configuration, it's 2p, 2s2, 2p1, whereas beryllium's just 2s2. So boron has that one electron in the p orbital, and it will lose it rather easily. It'll take less energy to be to end up being a completed shell. Guys, I hope 2.2 uh, periodic trends ended up making sense. We're going to practice this, and uh, hopefully you have it down. I'll help you out as much as I can. Thanks, guys.